the Soviet counteroffensive near Moscow, which began in December 1941, turned into a general offensive of the Red Army forces. The German army group, center, was for some time on the edge of the abyss, its defeat threatened disaster to all German troops on the Eastern Front. The combat initiative passed to the Red Army, and now its command determined the time of the beginning and direction of strikes on the enemy. The beginning of this counteroffensive caused more soldiers of Army Group, Center, panic moods, and well aware of history Germans began to remember the fate of Napoleon's army. Having got to the Eastern Front in the winter of 1941 German soldiers were not ready for the Russian winter, when the temperature dropped to minus 30 degrees. In order to keep warm somehow Germans put on everything they could get their hands on. Not having warm uniforms, they took from the local population near Moscow everything they could put on themselves. The soldiers dressed in women's dresses and skirts, and wrapped any rags on their heads, up to ladies' sleeves. And on the feet of German soldiers appeared wide straw boots, they put their feet in them for warmth. This is such an unsightly look the conquerors of Europe had. And also before the onset of winter, the German command issued a memo for its soldiers. Protection from frostbite, where they gave such recommendations. Feet and hands are especially sensitive to frost. You should change socks more often, because dirt does not keep heat. Put straw, cardboard or newsprint in shoes and underclothes. To protect your feet it is recommended to wrap boots in straw or rags. The best protection for the feet is Russian Valenki. Boots or boots made of straw it is recommended to involve prisoners or locals in making them. To protect the hands it is better to have two pairs of thin gloves than one pair of thick ones. Middens made of Russian tarpaulin are very good. And the prisoners who were captured by the Soviets were not the same as in the summer of 1941. The former disdain for the Red Army and blind faith in Hitler had been replaced by submission. The slogan when captured was, Russ gut, Hitler kaput. However, the German punctuality remained with them. At the beginning of January 1942 the offensive of the Soviet fronts near Moscow continued to develop successfully. The commanders of the German units found it increasingly difficult to keep their soldiers in positions and raise them in counterattack. Combat failures, high losses, severe weather all this had a detrimental effect on the mood of the soldiers. On January 17, 1942 the headquarters of the 9th Army passed to the headquarters of Army Group, Center, the report of the commander of the 3rd Panzer Group on the combat and numerical composition of the 6th Panzer Division, in which a special section was presented information about the morale of the troops. In particular, it was noted that as a result of continuous and heavy fighting, Cold weather and unheard of tension soldiers are so exhausted that more and more often officers are forced to force their soldiers to rise to the attack with weapons in hand, threatening the soldiers with execution. The necessity to expose untrained recruits to all the difficulties caused by the combat situation and weather conditions immediately upon arrival inevitably causes panic. Officers strain all their strength, but most of them are already out of action. Physical and nervous breakdowns are becoming more and more frequent. At this time, the SS Security Service noted the widespread dissemination in Germany itself, among the inhabitants of towns and villages, information from letters of soldiers of the Eastern Front, which described their plight. The following lines from various messages were quoted, I am the last of the old members of our military unit. All the others have been killed or wounded. There are only 15 men left alive from my company. I have only one wish to return alive from this scorcher. Many letters complained about the lack of winter uniforms. Some asked to send some food to the front. In February 1942, German soldier Alois Pfuscher wrote from the Eastern Front to his parents that they were in a cauldron of hell, and whoever got out of it with bones intact would thank God. Many of his comrades are killed or wounded. The fight goes on until the last drop of blood. They met machine gun toting women who would not surrender, and they shot them. For nothing in the world Allos would not want to spend another winter in Russia. Oberfeld Febel Melig wrote no less expressively about the situation at the front to his acquaintance Elise on February 22, 1942. 
You can believe me that there is nothing good here. It is terrible. I can't write to you about everything in detail. What we have had to endure in the last 14 days is indescribable. If only we could endure another eight weeks. Well be what it will be God willing. In the minds of some Germans, the fighting evoked religious and mystical feelings, in others a banal picture of slaughter much, of course, depended on the education and upbringing of the soldier both at school and in the family. On February 28, 1942, Sergeant Jacob described his impressions of the Eastern Front as follows. Here, in Russia, it's a terrible war, you don't know where the front is they shoot from all four sides. The old men have had enough of this cursed Russia. There are more than enough dead and wounded. On the road I almost fell ill and had to go to the infirmary. The infirmary resembles a slaughterhouse. The heavy fighting near Moscow was also described by Private Alois Zeitner in his letter of reply to his friend. Unfortunately, I could not immediately answer your letter, as we were going through very difficult days. Our battalion is in reserve and is being thrown in where the hottest fighting is taking place. A few days ago a big affair was planned. On our section of the front we wanted to encircle a far-flung section of the Russians. It was well planned. Three times we tried to do it, and three times we were driven back. We had heavy casualties. I, thank God, by some miracle got out of there alive. This time it was all about a few seconds. What happened during this offensive? You can certainly imagine the Russian acted with tanks, and we had only two assault guns, but even they were soon destroyed by Russian tanks. The Russians also have excellent artillery and pilots. What lies ahead of us? We do not know. And here's what Sergeant Willie Pinkin wrote in his letter of February 21, 1942. The past weeks were full of heavy fighting. On January 18, the Russians made a large offensive against our positions. The fighting took place at frosts of 25 to 30 degrees. The number of killed during this time reached 300 men. Russians do not give us rest either day nor night bombarding us with guns and dropping bombs. The defeat of German forces in the winter of 1941-1942 and its aftermath initiated irreversible changes in the course of World War II. This is primarily due to the military, economic and political outcomes of the Battle of Moscow, as well as the changes that occurred during its course in the international arena. All of these factors, each individually and taken together, had a negative impact on the Wehrmacht's morale. Many of the German leaders grossly underestimated the new adversary, the Soviet Union. This was partly because they knew either the Russian people, much less the Russian soldier. Some German military leaders had been on the Western Front throughout World War I and had never fought in the East, so they had no idea of Russia's geographical conditions and the resilience of the Russian soldier. But at the same time they repeatedly ignored the warnings of prominent military experts on Russia. It was very difficult for the Germans to get a clear picture of the equipment and fighting power of the Red Army. Hitler refused to believe that Soviet industrial production could be equal to that of the Germans. We had little information regarding Russian tanks. We had no idea how many tanks per month the Russian industry could produce. It was also very difficult for us to get even maps, because the Russians kept them under great secrecy. And those maps, which we had, were often wrong and only misled us. The biggest mistake of the German leadership I considered the war against Russia. It went against the traditions of German military science, said under questioning German Lieutenant General Willy Raydell. Russia's potential power was underestimated. I was aware from the beginning of the hopelessness of this enterprise, although I must confess that the Russian discovered strength and ability to wage war surpassed all that I could foresee. I obeyed the command and believed that it knows better than me and sees the weaknesses of Russia, which I do not see. But there were no such sides. Invading the territory of the Soviet Union, the Nazis believed that they were waiting for an easy ride, almost as in Europe. Not without reason they expected to end the war in the fall of 1941, before the onset of cold weather. 
but gradually they came to realize that they would not be able to defeat the Red Army Lightning fast, and near Moscow they felt what it meant to be beaten.